Karen and I weren't listening to each other. You know, I was trying to dominate her. I was insensitive. I was out to lunch. She was struggling. I was putting her down. She was disrespectful toward me. We were growing further and further and further apart, and we both had unmet needs, which are very dangerous. Listen to me. When a husband comes to his wife and says to her, I have not been a Christ-like husband to you. This is what I said to Karen. I have not been a Christ-like husband to you. I have not cherished you and I have not nourished you and I have put golf in your place and I've just I'm, I'm sorry for the way I've treated you I am and I'll change and to my hurt this is what I say to Karen to my hurt I will meet your needs and you will not have to nag you will not have to beg and you won't have to say it twice I'm completely committed to you when, you, when, when a man is committed, she's in heaven, by the way. She's in heaven. When you say that, you'll naturally begin to listen. You'll naturally begin to meet her needs. Because you want to. It's your purpose now. Before it wasn't your purpose. You're doing something else and she was just along for the ride. When a woman comes to her husband and says to him, I'm sorry the way that I've disrespected you. I didn't understand the way my words and my tone and my actions hurt you so deeply, you know, and how important this is to you. And I'm sorry, and I repent, and I won't justify it. Wh whatever my friends do, whatever I see on TV or the movies, whatever my mother, my grandmother did, I will not never justify disrespecting you again. And I realize that God put you in my life for a reason, and I need you. I need your counsel, I need your wisdom, I need your input. And I'm committed to being a godly wife and putting you first. When you do that, ladies, you naturally begin to pick up on what he's been trying to say and the things that are important to him. Literally, we, we become two servants in love. The most powerful marriage in the world is two servants in love. And that's, that's the spirit of Jesus. The worst marriage in the world is two bosses in love, both trying to dominate and subject the other. Now, li listen to me. Marriages in the world are falling apart and crashing. Not because there's not a way for it to work, but it's because we've rejected God's word as a society. But the unfortunate thing is, and I'm saying this after many years of, of ministering to couples in marriage, many of us have rejected the Bible. We may be Christians and we go to church, but what we've done is we've taken this, this part of the Bible concerning marriage and we've said, no, nah, I don't like that. I don't like that. Well, unfortunately, it is the only foundation that will make your marriage secure and indestructible is God's word. Je Jesus said, if anyone hears my word and obeys it, he's like a wise man that built his house on the rock. This is the rock. Listen, it will make you attractive. You're, you're together for a reason. You're attracted to each other. Now, you may not be attractive to each other at this moment, but you can be. If you're out of love, you can fall back in love. If you've done each other damage, you can repair that damage because that's where we were. And I want to say this now, you can't change your spouse. When you come to a marriage seminar like this, the tendency sometimes is to think, thank God I got him here, Jimmy, fix him. You know? Well, the, the better is to say this, I'm not listening for them, I'm listening for me. And regardless of what they do, I'm going to do the right thing. It's great news that God has a perfect plan for marriage. He really does. So many people today are brokenhearted because of the failure of their parents' marriages or uh, a marriage that they are in or they've been in. But I just want you to know, God never creates anything to fail or to flounder. He creates it to thrive and to succeed. And when you are doing your marriage according to God's perfect plan, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. And even one person in a marriage can dramatically change the marriage when you begin to do what's right. But, but the key is faith. Uh, the devil always comes to us with fear. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy 1.7 says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. Is that fear comes from the devil to try to get us to do the wrong thing. And let me say, when Karen and I were floundering in our marriage, we were both full of fear. We were both reacting to each other in fear. But today we have a marriage based on faith in God's Word. And most of the people that I've counseled over the years, they're full of fear is they're operating based on the fear of what their spouse does and fear if they do the right thing, they're going to get taken advantage of. 
But great marriages are based on faith. And the Bible tells us without faith, we can't please God. And so my encouragement to you right now is have faith in Ephesians chapter 5, God's perfect plan. Thank you for joining us. Experience the life-changing series, The Indestructible Marriage, on CD or DVD. Looking for your next great book? Start reading instantly with Marriage Today's eBooks, now available online. Follow your interests and get social by connecting with Jimmy and Karen and the Ministry of Marriage Today on Twitter. Become a rock-solid partner today and equip yourself with the tools you need for a successful marriage. $14, $28, or $56 per month. Choose the partnership level that's right for you. Become a rock-solid partner today.